Welcome back. In what's shaping up to be a blistering battle over President Joe Biden's recently proposed budget plan, the president is touting his administration's policies on lowering the cost of prescription drugs and helping those who depend on Medicare and Medicaid. The president stressed that message in Las Vegas earlier this week, earlier this week, accusing Republicans to cut health care programs that help so many Americans. Republicans, on the other hand, say the president's new budget would raise taxes and spending and contribute to a continued troublesome inflation. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Seth Magaziner of the great state of Rhode Island. He's a member of the House Homeland Security Committee and former state treasurer. Congressman, good morning. Thanks for being with us today. Uh, I know you have a lot of thoughts about the president's budget proposal, but we should be clear. This is more of a, it's a statement of priorities. It's a more of a political exercise than a practical roadmap for spending, since, of course, we've got divided government, Republicans control the House. But tell us, are there a few parts of the budget you could see Republicans joining? Are there areas of potential common ground? Well, there are areas where there should be common ground. You know, President Biden's budget is a budget that prioritizes working people by asking billionaires to pay their fair share. Uh, his budget prioritizes lowering prescription drug costs, investing in child care. If you want uh, more Americans in the workforce than invest in child care, that's an area where there ought to be bipartisan support. And it invests in affordable housing as well. Uh, all without raising taxes over anyone making less than $400,000 a year. In contrast, what we've seen on the Republican side uh, is extremism. Uh, Kevin McCarthy handed the keys of the House of Representatives over to the most extreme members of his party uh, in order to become Speaker. Uh, those extreme members in the Freedom Caucus have released a budget that would make painful cuts in health care, uh, in uh, education funding, uh, and other prog uh, priorities that matter to working people. So uh, you're right. I mean, we're in the posturing phase of the budget negotiations, but the difference could not be more clear. President Biden's budget mm -hmm. is a budget that uh, prioritizes the needs of working Americans, and the Republicans are prioritizing the needs of their donors, uh, not everyday Americans. So, Congressman, so speaking of uh, working Americans, you've been very vocal about the PRO Act which you say would protect the rights of workers. Uh, tell us a little bit about that now. How important is it? Well, listen, it was unions that helped build the middle class in this country. That was certainly true for my grandfather, who was a union steel worker, and with that job was able to uh, buy a house, put his kids through school, and earn a ticket to the middle class. Uh, over the last generation, as union membership has declined, uh, wages have remained stagnant while corporate profits have gone up. Uh, so one of the reasons that that has happened is that uh, big companies have become savvier in finding ways to harass workers out of forming or joining unions. Uh, the PRO Act is a bipartisan bill, bipartisan, Republican and Democratic co-sponsors, uh, that would toughen penalties against big corporations uh, that engage in union-busting activities. Everyone should have the right to join a union. Uh, that's part of how we built the middle class in this country, and it's how we will save the middle class ultimately. Congressman, you mentioned the word bipartisan, and there aren't too many areas of agreement right now, but one seems to be China. And you joined your colleagues on both sides of the aisle last week for a hearing on combating Chinese government espionage and intellectual property theft. So what's your greatest concern? And tell us, what can the Congress, what can you, the U.S. lawmakers, do about it? Yeah. Well, let's be clear, first of all, our beef is not with the people of China. Uh, it is with the Chinese authoritarian government that has set itself up to be America's greatest economic competitor. And uh, they are engaging in state-sponsored corporate espionage that is costing the American people billions of dollars a year, literally spying on American companies uh, to steal their intellectual property and make the same uh, goods uh, illegally in China. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do and should do, and I, I think you're right. This is an area that's ripe for bipartisanship. But the most important thing that we could do to improve our competitive standing vis-a-vis -vis China uh, is to invest in American manufacturing, to make more stuff in America. We took a big step forward last year with the CHIPS Act, by, uh, which passed on a bipartisan vote championed by President Biden to bring semiconductor manufacturing back to the United States. We should do more of that. More incentives to manufacture, to make more in America uh, is ultimately the most important thing we can do to compete with China going forward. And we'll be looking for more of those hearings in the weeks ahead. Congressman Seth Magaziner of Rhode Island, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And